So I woke up this morning and it's absolutely lovely out here. So I thought I'm going to bomb down to Portsmouth very quickly, as quickly as sensibly as I can. Annoyingly, I think I'll miss the gold colour of the light that's currently doing my flat building. But yeah, it's an excuse to get out in it, to give it a go, shoot some medium format. So I've just got here and the light's still good. Let's do this. Isn't it just lovely and quiet and pretty? So I've come out uh, to shoot some medium format. I've got my SQA, 6x6 medium format camera. I've loaded in a roll of Ektar 100 and already I've seen a composition that I really like. I really like the contrast between the alleyway and the lovely idyllic Ferris wheel. So I've already got a shot of that. Let's see what else we can find. So I'm also trying a relatively newish toy. I bought a light meter fairly recently from the market stalls in Wickham. And uh, it's a Polaris flash meter. Uh, I'm trying it today. I've tried it previously also with Ektar. I tried it using the reflective metering function and it was really out of whack. Whether that was because I was using it wrong, probably. So I'm trying with the incident light reading today and hopefully that's going to yield better results. So far it's looking at about 1-200th of a second, 100 ISO obviously because of the film speed and 5-6 on the aperture. Let's see what else we can find. So I've just found another composition I like. I quite like the difference between the newer facade cladding and the old and slightly decaying sense of grandeur that's on the Clarence Pier. So I'm on shot four. Uh, I've just taken another one at the front of the Clarence Pier and the light is not gone but it's behind a cloud so hopefully it'll come back out again but at least it gives me a bit of a breather to try and figure out some compositions amongst the noise. I'm not quite sure what the noise is. I think it's meant to be thematic. I'm assuming it's not indigenous to the pier. If you're curious, this is the only commercial hovercraft in the whole of the UK and I think one of two in Europe, if you're ever interested. Because why wouldn't you be? I know I am. So one of the things I really like about shooting medium format is it challenges me in two aspects. One, it's an all-manual camera, which I am used to, but it's the kind of the workflow that comes with this kind of camera. It's a lot slower, you know, there's nothing auto on it at all, so you can't, it's very hard to just switch off. You've got to really think about everything, which isn't a bad thing at all. I've got other cameras that I use when I want to just take photos and switch off. But the other thing I like about it is I have a tendency on my Instagram page to post in nines. So I give myself a challenge, which is try and get nine out of 12 keepers, which doesn't sound like much. Yeah, it sounds pretty, it's harder than you'd think. Um, I have to really be in the zone. I have to be on my own. If I'm str if I'm with someone and I'm taking photos, I really struggle to do it. If I'm on my own, I can normally nail it. So let's hope I've nailed it today. So I've been going around and um, shutter speed and aperture's generally been around the 200 five, six mark, but obviously at some points the sun, I mean the sun's just come back out again. So I've just shot this at uh, uh, F4, because I wanted that really shallow depth of field. Um, hopefully the picture will come out and you'll see why. Um, but yeah, I've got two shots left and then I think I'm gonna switch over to the F5. The reason I'm gonna switch over to the F5 is mainly because I've got a new lens to try. I've got a 35 to 135 
Uh, it's an F4 to, uh, sorry, it's an F35 to F45. So it's only one stop of light, not, maybe not even that. Whereas most very large zoom lenses are kind of two stops. So I'm interested to see how it does. Um, I want to get the 35 F2 because I love a prime lens. Uh, I just like having a pocketable lens and you'll probably see that it's quite a chunky, quite a big lens. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep it, but for 30 quid with a box of other stuff as well, can't complain. But let's fire off the last couple of shots, see what we can do. Whenever I shoot medium format, I always try and get a, what I'd call a centerpiece image. For me, this image is just that. I really like the difference between the tower and the post box and the tower itself, but I like it a lot. Okay, so I've just taken the last shot. Let's switch over from the most manual and most kerfuffly camera I own. And I'm very happy if it's kerfuffly because of all the fail saves. Uh, I guarantee you every time I shoot it, I forget to take the dark slide out and it won't let me take a picture. And I'm like, why won't you take a picture? And then it's like, oh yeah, dark slide. Um, so I'm gonna switch over from the most kerfuffly camera I have to the most lightning fast camera I have. So like I said, from the simplest camera I own to the most advanced, this is the Nikon F5, 8 frames a second, absolute unit, uh, weighs about 1.2 kilos on its own. Uh, I absolutely love this camera, but it's not a day-to-day -day camera. That's what the 301 is for. Let's see what we can find. I think one thing that continues to astound me about the F5, so I've had it probably out four months now, something like that, it's the quietest camera I've ever owned. Like, legit. Like, quieter than my mirrorless camera, my Sony A7 Mark II, which has the shutter slap, bearing in mind it's not got a mirror box, but it's got the shutter slap of Thor's fucking hammer. This is, like, silent. I don't understand. I mean... It is a genuine marvel of engineering, this camera. I cannot profess my love for it enough. Like I said, it's not my daily camera. It is not the camera that I keep in my bag because it weighs 1.2 fucking kilograms. But I absolutely adore this camera and I'm so glad I bought one. At the very least, for the technical marvel that it is on its own. Apologies for the vertical video. So my parking ran out and I have about 10 shots left there or thereabouts. I just got what I'm hoping is a really cool photo. There were these um, shooting the ice cream pile of us there and there's lots of pinks, lots of greens. And the last photo I got, there were these two girls walking past. One had pink hair, one had green hair. So I, they were very nice enough to let me take a photo of them as I'm sure they were very confused on a, at quarter past nine on a Tuesday morning being asked by someone, Hello there! May I take a photo of you? Please? I like how your hair matches the colour of the thing. I'm not a creep, I promise. Uh, so no, that was really nice. Thank you very much. So, new lens, 35 to 135. What am I thinking so far? I've not shot a 35 very much. <laughs> I, if you're familiar with my body of work, um, body of work, collection of photos, most of it is taken on a 50mm f1.8 or 1.4, depending on which camera I'm using. 50mm um, is definitely, definitely my most used focal length, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, <laughs> when I'm using this, I'm trying to like stop myself from zooming in and um, to get like photos, but. Um, and trying to kind of think, well, okay, once it's 35, 
what does a 35 mm lens look like like what does an image from that lens look like so i'm trying to get out of the habit of um zooming but to be fair i don't shoot with zooms very often uh the only time i shoot with zooms is really in zoos in which case i zoom in all the way because you try and get as close as possible but seems like an all right lens at the moment well the end will the proof will be in the proverbial pudding.